Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few videos back, I talked about the future for Windows 7 users, and it became very clear in the extensive comments in that video that a lot of us are thinking of transitioning to Linux over the next few years. In this video, I'm therefore going to show you how easy it is to create a bootable USB drive that you can use to try out Linux without installing it on your computer. Now, as you probably know, Linux is a free, open source operating system that comes in lots of different versions or distributions, or what they call distros. And for a long time, one of the most popular of these has been Ubuntu. And I was therefore thinking of making my bootable drive using Ubuntu. But I've heard a lot of good things, at least in the comments on the Windows 7 video, about Linux Mint, which I've not tried before. And so in this video, I'm going to be working with Linux Mint with its latest desktop, which is called Cinnamon. Right, the computer I'm going to use in this video is this one, my uh, trusted Acer Aspire 1 netbook. This runs Windows 7, and I guess that if you are going to be trying out a Linux usable USB key, the chances are you're currently running Windows 7. If you've gone to Windows 10, you're probably less interested in Linux, but you can do what I'm doing here with any version of Windows. In addition to a computer, I'm also going to need a USB drive. I've got this uh, new one here, a Sony uh, Voyager Vega, which matches the colour here quite nicely. The reason I've got this, I wanted a very small USB drive that is also USB 3. So if I try and get into this, I can get through this package. It's one of these... This is not a frustration-free package by any means at all, I don't think. Hopefully we can now... Oh, yes, we can. We can get in. There we are. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Oh, it's got stuff on top as well, hasn't it? Deary, deary, deary me. Getting into things is always a little bit. There we are. Finally, we're inside. I can hopefully release it from that bit of packaging as well. And look, there we are. Our tiny, tiny USB drive. And hopefully we can see in the end it has got some blue. Yet it's definitely a uh, USB 3 drive. And that should fit quite easily into the USB 3 port on the netbook. But of course, before we can start playing without putting something on the drive, we need to download a copy of Linux. Right, so with the machine booted up, I'm now on a Windows 7 desktop. I've created a folder in which to put my downloaded Linux files. I'm going to go to Google Chrome, and here I've gone to the website already, linuxmint.com, to get a copy of Linux Mint. So as I'm sure you guess, we'll now go to Download. And the latest version of Mint is codenamed Sarah, and it includes what's called the Cinnamon desktop. Now you can get it in both 32 and 64 bit versions. I'm going to use the 64 bit version here because now all my hardware is 64 bit. If you're in any doubt about that with an older computer, use the 32 bit version. But for most people these days, 64 bit should be okay. So I'll click on that. And I need to find a site to download from. There's lots of different mirrors here. And I'm going to keep going down because somewhere down here I know there is one in the United Kingdom, I think at University of Kent. There it is, look. So I'll click on University of Kent Mirror Service. It'll start to download, at least tell me to download, that's fine. Click on Save into my Linux folder, and it'll start to download down at the bottom of the screen down here. This will take quite a while, it's say a 1.6 gigabyte download, so I'll let that uh, fly through, and then we'll get on with the next part. And there we are, it's uh, finished. If we just go back and look at the desktop, we can see our folder there now has our uh, file with Linux uh, Mint Cinnamon sitting in there. So what I'm going to do now is to go to another website which is called uh, pendrivelinux.com and this allows us to download a file for putting that ISO, that image, onto our uh, USB drive. So all I've got to do here is to scroll down to the bottom of the page. The link you want is for the universal USB installer. It's easy as one, two, three. These links change a bit over time, but that's basically what you want. If I click on that, it'll take you to the relevant page. Here we are, just loading in the adverts. And if we go down here, somewhere on this page, oh, got a lot of adverts loading in there, slowing us down. There are some instructions, of course, but there is the basic thing to download with the installer. This is a very fast download. That shouldn't take very long. We'll save that to the same place, and that will start to download. There it is, look. And um, I think that's finished already. That's a nice rapid download. There it is, it's all finished off. I was getting ahead of myself there. So we can see 
Everything is now sitting here in our uh, folder. Let's just make that a bit longer so we can see the whole lot just to keep us happy. And we'll now run the installer. There we are, that's come up. Do we want to make changes to our computer? Of course, yes, we do. And we want to accept the license agreement. Of course, we do as well. And we're now running the uh, program. There's no installation to do. You just simply run the XE file. So we now need to select the Linux distribution we're going to put on our key, which is Linux Mint. We need to find our ISO file we just downloaded. We'll browse for that. And because we came from that directory, there it is already. We'll put that in there. We need to select our USB flash drive, which is our Corsair drive, which is drive E. I really don't want to change what's on my SanDisk uh, micro SD card in here, so it's definitely the Corsair drive E. Be very careful picking up that. And then finally, I'm going to set up a persistent file size for storing changes. In other words, we're going to leave some space on this setup so I can actually alter my version of Linux after I've booted it. And I'll come back to it in that state next time I use it. How much should we give it? Um, oh, I don't know. Quite a bit, actually. I'll give it maybe just over one, about one and a half gig. There's plenty of space on this drive. So we've done that. Now all I need to do is to press create to actually create the USB bootable drive. Uh, it's got just checking. I like software that checks. We're going to create it there. We're going to, obviously it'll take stuff off the drive. That's all fine. Yes, I really want to do it. And yes, and it'll get on with that process. Nearly there, and it's just finishing off, I think. And we should fairly soon have our bootable USB drive. Oh, it's always, you get right close to the end and it never, oh, there we are. It's finished, hopefully. It's doing something else. That's not fair, is it? Never mind, it's almost finished. And there we are. It finally has finished. Installation done, process complete, and we can close the file. So, in theory, all we have to do now to boot up into Linux on this netbook is to close down Windows and to do a reboot. So I'm going to do a, oh, I'll tidy things down, get rid of that program first, of course. I think I'll do a full shutdown and then we'll boot the machine up again. So I'll shut down out of Windows for now. So here we are at the moment of truth. We've got the netbook ready to boot up, the keys in, in the side of it. So I'll press the uh, on button, boot the thing up, and hopefully this will boot up, boot from the USB drive, and uh, boot into Linux Cinnamon. Oh, that's looks a good sign already. We've got somebody on the screen suggesting it's actually going to do that. And there we are. It seems to be working. Obviously, it won't be the fastest boot in the world, A, because this isn't the fastest computer in the world, and also we are booting from a USB drive. So even though we're booting from a USB 3 drive, it won't be as fast as a boot from the internal SSD on this machine. But it does look like things are working okay. And here we are, arriving on the Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop. If we just have a quick look around, you can see we've got a computer up here which shows us the uh, the drives on this computer are all, all nicely organised. We can see our Corsair drive we booted from, the uh, disk reader for the SanDisk uh, mini SSD card on this machine, and it's come up with the two partitions for the, the SSD, which we'd normally have booted from. That's all clearly working very well. If we look down in the menu, you will see lots of software that's already pre-installed. Under graphics, for example, they've already pre-installed the uh, GIMP image editor and an image viewer. Under uh, Office, we've already got pre-installed LibreOffice. Maybe I'll just launch LibreOffice Writer, prove it's there. Which it certainly is, that came up pretty quickly. Remember, we're running off a USB key here. This is, this is pretty good, isn't it? There's also the uh, Firefox web browser you might have seen here under internet. And we've also got a Thunderbird Mail. But we can't, of course, get to those at the moment because we're not online, or at least we could launch them, they wouldn't go anywhere. I think just before we go down to the icon here, I'm going to make this slightly bigger. So I'll uh, right click on that uh, taskbar and do panel settings. And I'm going to use a, a customized panel size and then make that panel quite a lot bigger and it'll scale everything else in proportion. That's much easier to see, at least for me in time, I would change a lot of the fonts here, but for the moment that will do. And I can now go down to this icon, which I can now see a bit better, and double click on that. 
to get to the networks potentially available, cjbnet is me. I will put in my password. And hopefully in a second down here it will show us. Yes, we're now connected to my Wi-Fi network. So if I go to a web browser just to prove the world is working as it should, May take Firefox a little while to boot up first boot, remember, for all of these programs. But uh, it looks like things are working. And hopefully we can prove we can go to, oh dear, world's favourite website. And hopefully, I must update it at some point. Yes, we are working. The Firefox web browser works as well. So there we are. We've got a working version of Linux which can boot from a USB key. Having said that, there's one potential complication I really do now have to explain. Right, we've now seen how it's possible to create a bootable Linux USB key, to put it into a computer and to boot from it. However, I must point out to you that not all machines will boot as easily as that from USB. So for example, here we've got a Microsoft Surface 2 Pro, not that modern machine, but a fairly modern computer. And here to boot from USB, what I have to do is to hold down the volume button and to press the on button at the top, and it'll start to boot. There we are, look, surface. And I'm holding down the button so it should be booting from USB. But in fact, it's going to boot to Windows 8.1. Always a bit of a disappointment there. I'll just come out of this. And the reason it's done that is that this thing has got what's called secure boot enabled. And you'll find that on a lot of modern tablets and uh, laptops, as I said. So in this particular circumstance, you do a little bit more to actually boot from a Linux USB key. Now exactly what you have to do depends on your particular machine. Here what I have to do is to hold the uh, up volume button and press the power on and off again. And we will get through to a, in a second hopefully, a setup screen. There we are. And there'll be a setup screen like this on all modern laptops and tablets and things like that. And as you can see here, we've got secure boot is enabled. If I go down to secure boot control, I can turn that to be secure boot disabled. And I can then exit setup and save and yes. And this will now reboot the machine because that's what it insists on doing. You can't boot from USB at this point. You just have to let it go through. So we'll whiz through this. But it will now be possible for me to boot from that Linux USB key. So if I try that, Let's try it. I'll hold my down button to make sure we boot from the USB. Press power on and down back again. And then if we're lucky, you'd like the subtle way it tells us that uh, we've had an insecure boot there. And there we are, we can now select a Linux boot. And if we're lucky, we'll start to see Linux Mint running on a Microsoft Surface. And I do find that just a, an extraordinary thing to do. It just seems a very nice uh, idea, doesn't it? To, uh, I'm sure Microsoft wouldn't like it very much. There we are, Linux Mint is coming up on this Microsoft Surface tablet computer. I bet Microsoft never ever thought Linux would be running on their machines like this, but it's, uh, it's just about coming up, isn't it? Come on. There we are, it's running. So as you can see, it is possible to get around to Cure Boot, and we've now got everything as we had before, and it's all working pretty well. And it's even in fact picked the right resolution for this high resolution screen. Um, it works pretty well, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Let's go into say graphics and we'll go launch GIMP, and uh, GIMP is running in Linux on our Microsoft Surface. Everything is running there very well indeed. A bootable USB drive like this one, which gets you straight into Linux on any computer, is a great way to start experimenting with the Linux operating system. And it's got me so interested that I'm about to start out on a personal experiment. Over the next seven days, I'm going to be using Linux as my only PC and laptop operating system. I'm about to enter my Linux Mint week. Now, for some of you, that's not very exciting because, of course, you use Linux all the time. But for me and for other people like me who use Windows all the time, it'll be interesting to see what I can and can't achieve having seven days only using Linux. So I look forward to reporting back on that. But uh, now that's it for another video. If you like this video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again all about Linux Mint very soon.